YouTube, it's Power Bricks, and I'm back with the final review of the Power Rangers Shuriken Storm or the Shinobi Sentai Shuriken lineup. And this here is the Hercules Hurricane Megazord. So we have two really nice beetles. We have the Crimson Hercules and we also have the Navy Blue Kabuto. And they could also combine into Grand Hercules, which is a larger beetle zord. So first we're taking a look at the navy blue one, which is really cool. We got some navy blue, silver, gunmetal gray, some black, and overall that is pretty much it when it comes to the overall design of it. It is supposed to resemble a tank, so there are some uh, blasters in the front of it and on top of its head right there. The uh, horn of the bug is a little articulated on ball joints and these are rotatable right here so you can pivot the guns however you would like and for the most part very simple very easy you see we got our six wheels right here they just roll around and they do what they're supposed to do they also have a little movement to them so it can go off road but it's supposed to stay plugged in there i don't know why it's detaching but it can go off road it's pretty simple we got some gold eyes on the side and Overall, it's a really simple design. I'm not really mad at it, but when it does combine with the other Beetle and the Megazords, it's huge. So, I give it the credit. It's one of the coolest ones out of the set, and so is the red one, which is a lot better. Or I should say the Crimson one. It has this really long um, horn right here. It kind of resembles a sword. It also has another horn down there. It has gold eyes, has some Crimson on top. You got some more gold and black to complement it. Some more gold pieces, silver pieces, all throughout the entire bug itself. There are six wheels that roll on there. And if I just position my camera, it rolls quite nice. And so does the other one. And frankly, I'm not mad at it. I can't be mad at it at all. These are very simple designs and they look really nice overall. Whoa, let me fix that. But they're really nice overall and I can't complain. The best part is when they do combine. So let's get into that and see how that looks. So here are our Beetlezords combined into the giant Grand Hercules, which is a massive Beetle Zord. I gotta say this thing is massive. It is a humongous tank with all kinds of little guns and weapons on it. It's like super decked out. Probably one of the biggest auxiliary Zords, if not the biggest. I'm definitely sure about that because this one is humongous. All right, but that's okay because we need it to be huge for what it's going to be when it combines. So really nice Beetle Zord. I was gonna draw a Ranger for it, but I feel like it's not really necessary. I think these would just be a very powerful auxiliary Zord. So he rolls very well. You can turn around, you got all these tanks and blasters and knives and guns and all kinds of stuff to really keep the bad guys away. So I think it looks pretty darn cool. Really, really, really digging the design. What do you guys think though? Is this one valid or is it not? Let me know in the comment section below. And I cannot wait to show you what the combined mode looks like. That is going to be absolutely killer. Okay, and I wanted to show you guys one more thing, and it's really simple. Um, he also has a little articulation 
on his uh, beetle legs, I guess you could say. They do articulate. You can see they bend there. It's um, a little movable for off-road type things to go on with the Megazord, which is pretty cool. It is pretty cool to have the off-road mechanism. Also, the head, um, it can move up and down a little bit so you guys can see. And then I have this one that opens up for no apparent reason. But it definitely works, all right? Uh, this works very, very well. I think this is a really cool sword. Can't stop holding it. Probably one of my favorite auxiliaries ever because you already know why. It looks like the Beatles from the Thunderstorm Megazord. So you can only imagine how it looks when it combines with the other Zords. It's gonna be freaking insane. So let's get into it. So as you can see, this is a very, very, very large Zord. These two Zords on the side are just for comparison, and you know that they're already large, but this thing is absolutely a behemoth. One of the biggest Zords I've ever made, and I don't think you guys have a clue on how big this Zord is. It is absolutely insanely large. So are these, so you can't really tell how big they are, but they are huge, okay? And this is probably 
one of the best Ultra Zords I've ever made because it resembles the Hurricane Megazord. This is the Hercules Hurricane Megazord. So, very close along the lines. And let's get into the articulation and then we can see what the other two look like when they're combined with the Beetle. Well, since the Zord is so massive and so large, the articulation is actually very limited. Um, there is no leg articulation, though the legs do look nice. It is a solid brick. It's supposed to hold up all of the weight. There is also a little bit of arm movement. Of course, you can adjust the arms. They are on ratchet joints, so we can get a little movement there. But there is a little bit of head articulation, and when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. His head can move. Let me see you guys. Can you see it? so freaking large his head can move up and down and he can move side to side which is okay for the Megazord um, I obviously don't know what else to say about this other than it being huge um, probably one of the biggest Zords ever you guys know that this is the final video of the entire wave so with that being said, let's just get into the other half of it and we can finish off this wave nice and sweet with the awesome Zord and then we can get into the next Zord. So for starters, I'm just gonna start ripping off everything that has been applied onto this Megazord, okay? And I'm going to reattach it onto the other Zords. It combines practically the exact same way. The only thing that I won't use is this piece here. Uh, it fits very well on this Zord and it hides well, but I can't fit this on anything else besides on the back heel of the Mega Zord, and I don't think I like it much. So I'll be putting this body to the side because it is practically finished. He is now entering the retirement stage. Now we can get all of these and we can combine them. So we're gonna start off with the Shinobi Storm Megazord. I think that's what it's called. But taking this mace out of the hand, also I am going to remove its sword if it would freaking cough it out. All right, there it is. We're gonna take off this head and we're gonna take off this head. All right, plug this right on the back. The bird head could just sit to the side for now. And we're gonna start combining the entire Megazord, which is going to take a lot of work. So let's start from the upper half this time. We're gonna get the blue, plug it on, like so. All right. Then we're gonna get the red feet, and they fit way more snug on this Zord because this was engineered for this Megazord at first, until I made the other two. Now it's engineered for all three. All right, so we got the legs on. And boom, they fit very sound. All right, then we're gonna get these beetle legs and they plug right onto the side of the Megazord like this, going upwards. All right, like so. This is already getting huge. I think this is probably bigger than the other one. Yeah, it might be a little bigger. All right, next, chest plate. Plug that bad boy on. What did I just detach in the back there? Oh, I took off the tiger's fang. My bad, guys. Let me do a quick little adjustment there. Boom, all right. Back to the Zord. All righty. We're going to plug the head on top. Then I get the sword. That goes directly into the hand of, well, either hand of the Megazord. I'll put it in this hand this time. Okay, I see. Fold it up. Boom. I guess I'll put this sword in the other hand too. I should never take it out. All right. Put the other sword in the other hand. And the bird, there is absolutely nowhere for it to go. Unfortunately, um, that's fine. I was trying to get it to do the shoulder cannon. Actually, it can be a shoulder cannon. I think I could cheat it. Let me see. Whoa, I'm always knocking something off. All right, I'm actually trying to rush because it's very early and I'm hungry. Yeah, um, 
I don't know if that's going to fit. Alright, the bird's not going to fit. But, here it is. It's all complete, and I think this one looks a lot better anyway, because of the red. The red and the blue complement each other very, very, very well. This is a huge sword, and it just looks beautiful. Very, very beautiful, this version of it. With the red and the blue, I guess it fits very well because the dark blue and the sky blue contrasts very well alongside the red and the crimson. It looks really, really good. Really, really good. I am loving it. So, that is it for this Zord. Um, actually, no. There is a little more articulation. Uh, we do have knee bending. Uh, the legs do move outwards, which is sweet. So there is that. Um, I do want to adjust that hinge there. There is 360 degree arm rotation. It can also move up and down. You can bend on the elbow, move outward. You can get some movement there with the sword. Okay, same here. We got the full. 60. Okay. And there is hello, some head movement. This one looks really cool. Oh, I love this version. I should have saved it for last. This one looks so cool, but actually the white one looks really cool. I'm not gonna lie, that one looks cool too. They all look good with the beetle formation. So that is a solid 8.9 out of 10, maybe a 9 for this version. The other one was about a uh, about an 8.92. They're all about the same, but this one is a little cooler because of the contrast of the Zord. And I think that it looks really, really nice. But you guys gotta let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about this Zord formation here? So now let's prepare for the white Zord formation. Take off these, pull off the head, take off the sword, take leg sections off, pull, yeah, if I can get it, pull the feet off of the Megazord, okay, got the feet off, and we're just going to take off the chest plate, and then we're left with this body, and I'll set that to the side, because it no longer has a use for the video, now we're going to bring this one in, and this is where things get interesting, I'm going to pull that off, Pull off the head, sorry about that, pull off the head, then I'll take off this sword, and now we can start combining. So the first thing I want to do is the feet, and I'm going to close up these toes here. These toes are going to provide uh, more stability for the Megazord itself, or Ultra Zord, I should say. So we're going to get this, plug it under, okay plug it under and then we're going to fold that down all right and there is a solid foot already and I like this one because it has three beetles um, we also have the stag beetle <laughs> combined with it so there is a little more beetle power for the white sword uh, shout out to Tommy let me see uh, plug this on the bottom all right got the legs ready we're not done though. Bring it down a little bit. The shoes, got some nice sneakers on. Okay, next we're gonna get the red. Plug it in there, like that. Do the same thing to the other side. Plug it in, whoa, like so, all right. That is on line. All right, we got that. Now we move up. We're going to do the shoulder cannons. I like this one because these shoulder cannons point forward. Ah, there we go, they're very tight. But those are the shoulder cannons right there. Okay, uh, next we are going to do the chest plate. Plug that bad boy on. Ah, there we go. You guys getting this? All right, boom, got it. Now the next step, sword. Of course, gotta get the sword to fit 
right to the palm of the Night Zord. I'll put the bird head, the crane sword on the other hand. So I have two. Because why not? Alright. Got the other sword in hand. It's looking pretty crazy right now. Alright. Uh, let's open up the wings for this. Alright, and then we're going to bring the head on top. And here is the Ultra Zord with the white formation. I think this one looks freaking insane. Really insane. Um probably I don't even know. It's huge. It is a very huge Zord. Uh, it looks really, really nice. Uh, there is articulation, obviously. You guys know that these things are articulated to have all kinds of movement throughout the entire Megazord. And it looks pretty nice. There's leg movement. There's also a bend at the knee right there. So he can fly away. He can fly away. It's freaking huge. You guys can see as I'm holding it. Very, very, very large sword. Okay. So, that there is the Ultra Zord on the white crane formation. It looks really, really nice. I think the colors do complement each other very well. Uh, the magenta is a nice addition to the crimson and the navy blue. So, what do you guys think about this video? Make sure that you all like, comment, and subscribe for more. I'm so glad that we made it to the end of this wave, and I cannot wait to see what the next wave is going to be. You guys stay tuned, and this is Power Bricks signing off. Well, gang, it appears that we've made it to the end of the wave. This was a really good wave, and we had some really awesome Zords to look at. I'm glad that we had a great experience overall. And seeing all these Zords really reminded me of how cool a Ninja Storm was in many other series. But now that that's all over, we get to just cherish the moment by looking at all of these beautiful Zords. I think that I did a good job on this wave. What do you guys think? It's really nice to see all of these Zords and all of these colors and unique personalities work together to create many new combinations and many cool different Zords. Definitely something we've never seen before from a lineup, and I really wish to see more. Well, until next time, guys, that's it for this wave, and this is Powerbricks signing off.